Okay, uh, you're going to see this year that we've broken uh, some of the content of the, the two days down into what Microsoft looks at as the four pillars of digital transformation. And they are engaging your customers, enabling your employees, transforming your products, and optimizing your operations. And for each of those, I'm going to share some stories of both customers and partners who have had success doing some very cool things using the cloud. And then we're going to have a partner join us on stage and do a little bit of a deep dive into their business where uh, they've particularly been successful. So as you would hope and expect, we're going to start the pillar conversations now by looking at the concept of engaging your customers. So in the fourth revolution, customer connections aren't random, they're deliberate. The cloud can automate sales processes to improve efficiency and improve customer connections and help everyone on a team better understand customer preferences to grow sales and increase loyalty. For example, the Portland Trailblazers faced declining attendance for several years. So with their partner SSB, they used Dynamics 365 and Azure to collect fan data to better understand them. They used that to create personalized experiences. And they were even able to predict who would and would not renew season tickets, take action, and sell 100% of their seats. Or kiosk, or ziosk, whose restaurant system allows guests to order themselves, dramatically speeding up the service of food. When that system is tied into Azure Machine Learning, restaurants can actually predict customer patterns to personalize the dining experience and make service even faster. Or look at this food story. Feeding America has over 200 food banks across the United States serving 3.3 billion meals a year to needy people. But the process of getting food from farm to table is very complex and sometimes the food spoils. So, using SQL and Office 365, our partner Alligator Tech has sped the process up so much that it's eliminated delays. Food no longer spoils, and Feeding America is actually able to feed more people. Many partners are using the cloud to target brand new business opportunities as well. In Australia, for example, Cloud has built a very sophisticated blog, which is in essence a free consulting service. They've used that to build their business to over 200 employees and a recent acquisition by Telstra. In Japan, following the Great East Earthquake, business continuity became a critical issue for ATM Japan, a major provider to financial institutions. Our partner, Internet Initiative Japan, migrated them to a hybrid cloud solution with Azure in just five months, four months ahead of the planned schedule. So really understanding customers and their needs, speeding up delivery, creating personalized experiences, all of these are part of the new paradigm of customer service for you, the partners, and for all of your customers. And with that as a kickoff, it's a great pleasure to welcome to the stage today the CEO of NorCloud, Isa Kanunen. Isa, please join us out here. Let's give it up for Isa. <laughs> welcome. How are you? Good morning. Have a seat. Be comfortable. So you have a fantastic business based in Finland. And uh, we, talked, we were talking before we came out here. Uh, your background actually is Nokia, and you started this business in 2011 from scratch, right? You just said, okay, I'm going to start a business. Maybe tell us a bit about how you got going. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, we kind of found out in kind of late 2011 that the cloud is going to win the global, global IT, uh, IT business, and uh, not kind of immediately, but in the longer run. Uh, at the same time, we kind of noted that there are like a few kind of large enterprises that are ready to go to the cloud, but couldn't know how. and uh, and. Uh, like you, like you kind of said that we don't have any background in the IT, that we kind of consider that that's the way how it should be. And then we established a company and, uh, and then I gave a call to Microsoft and say that, hey, that's the plan. So let's get the partners and uh, that was agreed. And, and then I start to sell in the customers like the door-to-door -door basis. 
And uh, your whole bus business has been adding value, right? Helping to manage services. So is that the opportunity you saw? A lot of people got into this business with, with the hosting side of the business, but you kind of came straight in uh, in 2011, said we're going up the chain very fast. Right. Uh, I mean, we are going to do the both side. It's kind of build phase and then the managed services side. But managed service really that we're adding value. So I'm mean, typically we sell the uh, kind of business decision makers at the customers. So they have a kind of business need that they have to, you know, to be to get done, and uh, and and we can find a solution on that. And of course, at the later stage, we have to dealing with all the experts in the in the company to make it complete. But uh, but I have always kind of felt that cloud is not uh, like a technical solution. It's a business solution. Right. And it had to be sold like that and, of course, delivered then in the kind of holistic manner in the end of the, of the case. So you were, you were selling to the C-suite right when you started, day one, right? Exactly. So I, you put a process together. I think this could be high value to all of you. And uh, maybe you could put the slide up if you could. Uh, you've got a very, very deliberate process for how you engage your customers to get involved in the cloud, and then you migrate them. And maybe you could just talk us all through your model. Right. Can I ask background that, that we kind of sell only to cloud enterprises, and that means that there are plenty of people in the decision making, but also in the, the deployment phase. And we are also a fairly international company, so we operate in the seven countries. So we found a need that, that we have to have like a solid sales, but also deployment process that we can do the things in the, in the synchronized manner. So the process is fairly simple. It's kind of four stages. So that we have the first stage we call like a strategy creation. So we sit down together with customer experts and define the IT model for them. And of course, that's the kind of phase that we try to convince the customer once more that cloud is the right thing. And the second phase, we start to build like a secure uh, cloud landing zone for the application and taking care about the governance and security. And once that is kind of done, then we start to migrate in the application to the cloud from the data center. And that doesn't mean that it's go all in, you know, one go, but like a little by little, one by one. And then we optimize the setup, and, uh, and, and uh, if customer is having every now and then new application, those would be also added in the cloud under the DevOps concept. And, uh, and the fourth phase is kind of needed that all the application doesn't fit in the cloud as is pacey. So we have to support the customer kind of redesign those and get those also in the, in the cloud over the time. And, uh, and the goal is just to get the fast track for the customer go in the cloud. But the, the, and the other side of that, though, is that by the time you've moved through the phases, you're deep into your customer's business. You're not just providing them a service. You're, yeah. you're uh, you know, it's the managed service part of it. You're managing parts of their business, so you're adding value at every stage. And that's a competitive differentiator for yeah. you, right? Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, that process actually so in that kind of build phase, kind of mainly so. But it's really the asset that once we have customer get on the cloud, we have to manage that and manage that for the years to come. And that's the asset. So we have built the solution and service package and, uh, and the team. So we have one centralized team in the Helsinki, Finland, that takes care of our customers in the Europe. So really keep that platform kind of uncompromised and, and, uh, and operational every, every moment. Right. And has it been a challenge finding people, I, I think I, I speak for some of you in the room, that as you, as you migrate the business, finding the people that, who can add the value to the customers intellectually, not just technically, is very difficult because you're, you, you know, you're going after a, a pool of talent and you've done that now in seven countries. Mm. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, how you find the people and how you use this process to make sure you can deliver consistently? Right. Uh, I think the beauty of what we have in the business that we didn't have anything. We started from the scratch. And every, kind, every person that we have hired in the company has been kind of hired based on that business model that we have invented. So we have been able to kind of, you know, really take the people, you know, up for that and then to find like the best possible combination. And of course, in our case, in seven countries. And of course, uh, finding the good people is not, you know, easy, but you can do that. And, uh, and the typical model is simply that, that as we are around, meeting the customers, being the events like this, we see good people and, and then we give a call and say that, hey, that's our model, are you keen to join us? So uh, yeah, you told us that when we first talked that, that you've actually used this and, and the World Partner Conference, I think, as a place yeah. to find partners to help. Um, let's look, we, we're gonna talk to for a sec about one of your customers, uh, and if you could bring that up. Uh, the Finland Railway, the National Railway. So classic 150-year-old business, 
uh, presumably tens of thousands of employees, a lot of old legacy stuff, and a lot of old legacy thinking, I'm guessing some of which is we don't want to go near the cloud, yet you've got them to migrate. So can you talk about them as an example of how you've done it and how you've used your process? Yeah, uh, that's interesting case, and of course, we didn't, we didn't have a customer actually explain that kind of thoroughly, but, uh, but I think that represents one of our kind of enterprise customers, Radisson, a company, fairly large one, and uh, of course, Radisson, our kind of set of partners from the past decade. Uh, uh, like every good business, they of course had a business pressure as well, and uh, they have to lower the cost base and, and find agility in the business, and uh, they came in that conclusion about two years ago that they need a public cloud to be, you know, be the platform for them to make that, make that bold call uh, to happen. And then we came together, and uh, that has been like the journey along the process that that, that kind of shortly explained. So that we get that kind of governance made, uh, then we start to migrate in the application one by one basis. Application are they kind of them, our managed services concept, and and that's the process to continue. So. I guess that that's going to still last like a few years and uh, hopefully in that time the customer is all in, in the cloud. Well, you said that you're actually beating a lot of competition out because a national railway, a business that big, obviously has a lot of suppliers in there in the IT space yeah. and you're using this basically to shoehorn them out, right? Yeah, exactly. So they are perhaps like all the, all the locals and maybe many of the global uh, partners all, all in, but uh, uh, they didn't have a competence, or maybe they didn't have actually the will to go to the public cloud, and, and the customer has to find like a new sort of uh, you know player in that uh, in the party, and, and we came that, and uh, it goes going really really nicely from our point of view, and hopefully of course from also the customer point of view. And uh, from little old Finland, you've built a pretty significant business. Maybe just talk about that a bit. You said you're in seven countries. Yeah, right, yeah. So started five years ago, and, and, and today we're operating in all the Nordic countries, uh, Germany, UK, and the Dutch market as well. We have well over 100 people in that business. We have brought till today about 300 enterprises in public cloud. So uh, it has been fairly successful business to us. And uh, lately also we are rated in the Gardner Quadrant, so that got that appreciation also, let's say, in the global level. Right, that's fantastic. So uh, what advice would you give uh, this audience? You've got a room full of your peers and partners here. Uh, you've learned a couple of things in the five years and built a successful mm -hmm. business. What, what would you tell them? Yeah, maybe a couple of things come into mind that, that, that A, that uh, public cloud is going to win that kind of infrastructure business over a long period of time. So join so that business and, uh, and the third guy would get the, get the largest market share over the time. Then the other thing, the other thing that we had also that asset that we didn't have actually the own data center. Uh, I think my advice is that if you have own data center, kind of start to cannibalize that on your own before somebody like NordCloud comes and start to kind of steal in your business. And uh, what we have also found out that kind of fun factor, the public cloud business is great fun. It's international business, it's dynamic business. And uh, my recommendation is that uh, join the party cannibalize your own data center. Okay, well, there you go. Um, but uh, uh, the other side of it also is, and I think very important, is, is, that, is the value added part of your business. That, that you don't see it as a technology business. You've dealt with the CEO from the day one. Yeah. And I think that maybe share some thinking around that, which is how the managed services can actually get you in and get you in deep for a long time. Mm. I think kind of getting it back that, uh, you know, we sold to kind of business leaders and still doing that. And uh, uh, I think that, you know, at least in the time, you know, our, our kind of, you know, world, if we start to sell in this like uh, IT people, typically also the customers start to defending also the existing solution. It's better to find like a business sponsor in the customer mm -hmm. organization, and then you get the traction. But of course, to make that kind of story complete and get that, you know, done and, 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 and operational, of course, you have to be dealing with the whole organization. That's why we have models so that we can convince the customer in the kind of holistically that we know the security, we know the governance, we can make that in the systematic manner for the customer and, and uh, get those like uh, benefits that uh, expected to have to materialize. So have a model that you can deliver consistently across countries and across new exactly. hires. Exactly. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Uh, it's been fantastic talking to you. Please, let's give it up for Isa. Thank you. Uh, thank you so Bye much for joining us. It's been a pleasure.